back. We are now going to talk about leukocytes. Leukocytes are white blood cells because site means cell and leuco means white. Now, in comparison, if you remember when we were talking about the red blood cells and we said in that cubic millimeter, there were 5 million red blood cells. There were in that same cubic millimeter of blood, there's only five to 10,000 white blood cells, okay? So um, about a thousand to one. And as opposed to red blood cells living 120, 120 days, white blood cells, some of them only live hours and others live for years depending on the type. So you're not responsible for knowing how long they live. Now, if you look at this picture over here, and this picture is really a drawing, it's not a picture of a blood smear, it's a drawing because it's trying to show you all the different types of white blood cells in one drawing, which would never happen in a normal blood smear. But what you can notice is all of these cells have a nucleus and they are all larger than a red blood cell. Some of them, have a nucleus that's about 90% of the cell. And these are the ones that are closest in size to, <coughs> excuse me, to the red blood cells. Whereas others have a nucleus, which has like little lobes, which are attached to each other. This one has a nucleus, which is kind of like a jelly bean. And some of these have granules in their cytoplasm, which we will talk about shortly. Um, but what all the white blood cells have in common is they can undergo a process known as diapodesis. So say that word for a second, diapodesis. So in diapodesis, what it is, is if, if this is your blood vessel wall, it has a simple squamous epithelium. And what happens at a site of injury, the tissues release chemicals. And one of those chemicals causes the the blood vessel diameter to get larger so that the connections between the cells loosens and so the white blood cells can squeeze between the epithelium. And so now that allows these white blood cells to be found in the tissue so they can do their job, keeping you healthy, getting rid of invaders, and they can do that in the tissue. So let's look at these various leukocytes. So there are five of them. They all have a specific name. They all have a specific function and you do need to know them. So I cannot stress enough to learn the five and their functions before you go on to the next section where we're talking about the lymphatic slash immune system and it's doing their work. Cause you need to know what each one does before we put them to work. So three of these five white blood cells have granules in their cytoplasm. So they're called granulocytes. And these granules contain enzymes to help defend against disease. And these enzymes and chemicals do various things. Um, so the first type of cell is called a neutrophil. And that's because the granules in the cytoplasm aren't staining with either of the stains that we are staining the blood with. We stain the blood with a stain that stains red and stains blue. And here it's not staining red or blue. It's just staining enough that you can kind of see that there's might be a little something going on in the cytoplasm. So it's neutral, called a neutrophil. The other thing you can notice is this nucleus is very weird. It has these little tiny connections between the various lobes of the nucleus and the neutrophil will always have three, four or five lobes to its nucleus. Neutrophils are the first responders to a site of injury. And so they are going to become the first phagocyte. And so they're going to do phagocytosis clean up on aisle three. Um, and they become very important at areas where there is bacterial infection. So if you have a bacterial infection, the number of neutrophils in your blood will go up from about 60% to 90%. 
The second type of cell is one called eosinophil because we use a red stain called eosin and these cells love, fill means love, they love the eosin. And so you can see that their cytoplasm is all these red granules and they actually have a nucleus that has two lobes. It's kind of hard to see because it's staining almost the same color as the granules. These have two big things that they do. They are anti-allergy because they're anti-inflammation and they're anti-parasitic because these granules, when they are released, will actually digest like the little worms, little parasitic infections. Um, so if you had malaria, you'd have a higher eosinophil count, but normally these are a very low one to three percent. You don't have to know the percentages, but I'm just letting you kind of know an idea so you figure out um, which one, which are the more important ones. The third ones are the basophils because they are staining with the stain that is blue. And it is these are big, thick, blue clumps of stain so much that you can hardly see the nucleus at all. And these granules um, release histamine. So it's going to give you that allergic reaction. You know, the histamine that gives you you know, the sniffly nose and the itchiness and the redness, yes, they will cause that allergic reaction. They will increase blood flow to an area of injured tissue. Um, these cells, when they do move into tissue, what was that process called? Diapodesis. So when they do diapodesis and move into tissue, we call them mast cells. We just give them a name change so we know where they are. Okay, now we have two cell types that do not have granules, so they're called agranulocytes. The first of these is a monocyte. As you can see, the nucleus here is like, looks like a little fetus or a jelly bean, or sometimes it looks like a peach with a dimple in the middle of it. Their entire job is to do phagocytosis, so when they undergo diapodesis, they are macrophages. They are not the early responders, they are a little later to show up. They're going to show up, you know, maybe a week later, um, but they can stick around a lot longer. They'll still be there after, a, you know, 10 days, two weeks to finish it up. And the last cell type is the lymphocyte. These are the ones that are mostly nucleus and just a narrow rim of cytoplasm in the blood. And that's because they're not activated. Okay, um, they are the cells that are gonna give us our specific immunity. They become our B cells and our T cells. So we'll be talking about them a lot when we talk about our lymphatic immune system. They also will proliferate when we have viral infections because viral infections um, are attacked by our T cells. So that's why we get lots of lymphocytes there. So normally we would have about 30, 35% lymphocytes. And so if that goes up to 50% lymphocytes, then we know we have a viral infection. So that brings me to this slide to never let monkeys eat bananas. This is just a little mnemonic to help you remember the names of the five leukocytes actually in the order from the ones we have the most of to the ones we have the least of. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is what happens if we have a cancer of the white blood cells? Well, all of these cells have precursor cells and any precursor cell can become a cancer. And by a cancer, we just mean it proliferates uncontrolled. And so we have like, 19, 25 different types of leukemias. And so these cells with their uncontrolled proliferation can't do the normal job they're supposed to be doing. And so here's an example of a blood smear from somebody with a leukemia where you can see instead of having about a thousand red blood cells to one white blood cells, we actually have more white blood cells than we have red blood cells. Okay. So we don't have to know anything else about leukemia, but 
Remember, white blood cells can undergo diapodesis, in which case they are in tissue, correct? So if we have a cancer of these same cells in tissue, we can't call it a leukemia, okay? Leukemia, the emia means blood, the leuk means the white cells. So if this is a cancer of these cells in tissue, we call it a lymphoma because it's a solid tissue, not a liquid tissue. All right, that's it for this section. I will see you when we come back. And our last section, I think, is all about platelets. See you soon.